Okay, you guys, let's go ahead and do another example with our confidence intervals. So let's look at this little uh, this little example. It says Steve is out measuring the rotational speed of a crocodile in a death roll. He finds that the average speed um, is 3.6 seconds per uh, 3.6 rotations per second with a standard deviation of 0.72 rotations per second. He has measured a total of 53 crocs and he wants to make a 97.5% confidence interval with his results. Wow, I cannot spell. Results. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and do this. So the first thing that we should probably try to figure out is what type of data are we dealing with? Are we dealing with numerical? Are we dealing with categorical? So today I want to work basically primarily in RStudio. You could do this in Excel as well, um, but it's going to be helpful so that we can, uh, so I can keep track of all my variables. All right, so first things first, I want to know data type. And the data type that I'm dealing with right now is numerical. Let me put that... Okay, so I've got a numerical data type, and the reason is because is that he's actually going and measuring this. This is not categories, uh, and so we've got numerical. So because of that, we're going to be dealing with means. Okay, so I know that... Uh, let me try to blow this up a little bit. Give me just a second. Okay, so I know that x bar is going to be the sample mean. So from our... Our scenario we found that the average speed of those rotations uh, is 3.6 rotations per second all right so now I've got my X bar let me go ahead and move this around just a little bit there we go okay and the next thing that I want to look at is what is my standard deviation now are we dealing with a s the sample standard deviation are we dealing with sigma the population standard deviation well our standard deviation here is coming from the sample he finds so he finds from his measurements that they had a standard deviation of 7.2 so we've got s equals oh sorry not 7.2 but 0.72 okay because of that it's going to let us know what type of um, of confidence interval equation we're going to use. We'll get to that in a second. Let's get some more data first. So we have an N, a sample size of 53, because it says he measured 53 um, animals. And we've got a confidence level. We'll do confidence level equals 0.975. He wants to be 90, he wants to make a 97.5% confidence level. So then we know that alpha, I'm just gonna leave that as A, equals one minus the confidence level. And that gives us point, uh, point zero 0.025. And then I'm going to do A underscore 2, or we'll do, I don't know, 82 for alpha divided by 2. So it's going to be A divided by 2. And that gives me my alpha divided by 2, since we're going to be doing a confidence interval. Okay, so the last question that we need to answer before we do anything is which confidence interval equation are we going to use? Remember, we have the confidence interval equals uh, x bar plus or minus, sorry, plus or minus, and then we've got z and then alpha divided by 2, sorry, 2 times sigma divided by the square root of n. And I'll put these in like squiggly brackets because those that's a subscript. And if I do the confidence interval for the other one that we have is x bar plus or minus t, and we've got alpha divided by 2, and we also need to know the degrees of freedom, and that's times s divided by the square root of n. So the big thing here is we had to know, are we dealing with sigma, the population standard deviation, or s, the sample standard deviation? And we already decided that we were dealing with s, the sample standard deviation, so we are going to be using this bottom equation. So we're going to need to know our t-score, we're going to need to, need to know our degrees of freedom. So let's go ahead and figure that out real quick. So we know that the degrees of freedom is going to be equal to n minus 1. And so now I've got my degrees of freedom. Okay, I'm really close. Uh, let's go ahead and calculate the standard error. 
So I have the standard error, that's going to be s divided by the square root of n. So one of the nice things that I like about using uh, just the RStudio environment is I can quickly label my variables and then I can just use my variables uh, along my way. It's handy. Um, we can do all of this in Excel as well. All right, so I've got my standard error, so s divided by the square root of n. And so now I've got my standard error and I've got my x bar. Now I just have to figure out my t value. So this t value is going to be a little tricky. Um, because there's no way to do it unless if we go to our commander. So let's go ahead. Oh, doesn't look like I have our commander pulled up yet. I'm going to pull up our commander. Well, maybe I do already have it pulled up. Give me just a second. There we go. Okay, great. So now I've got our commander all pulled up. So if we want to find this t, we know that, that we need this t value. Um, I'm going to have to go to quantiles. Remember, when we're doing our confidence interval, this Z score, this T score, those have to be found in the quantiles. So we're going to go to distributions. We're going to go to continuous, and we're going to go to T distribution, and we will go to T quantiles. Now, this subscript gives us two pieces of information. It's going to give us the probability, and it's going to give us the degrees of freedom. So up here, I've got my alpha divided by 2. That's your probability, 0.0125. And the degrees of freedom are going to be equal to 52. Now, it doesn't matter if you choose the lower or the upper tail, uh, because we're just looking for the distance from the mean. Uh, it could be positive or negative, and we're actually going to use both because we do plus or minus anyways. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And it gives me my quantile, this QT. So this is my critical... Um, my critical t value. Now, this subscript, this with the alpha divided by 2 and the degrees of freedom, I use them both to calculate out this t value. Look, there's my alpha divided by 2, there's my degrees of freedom. Once we use it to find that t value, we do not use those subscripts anymore. We don't use them to multiply or divide, they're just used there to find that critical t value. Okay, so now I can say that my, I'll do confidence interval and then low, is going to be equal to, we'll do x bar minus, oh, before we do that, let's define our t. I'm just going to say t equals, and I'm not going to grab the negative sign because I'm just interested in the distance away from the mean. Okay, so now we can do it. Now we can do the confidence interval low is equal to x bar plus t, so because that's that t value that I got, multiplied by the standard error. And that that's it. This is a really easy equation. I want to hit enter. And now I've got my confidence interval low up here. And then finally, I'll put in my confidence interval high. And oops, I am apologize. I made a mistake. I'll have to go back in. So that's actually my confidence interval high. My low, I need to subtract it out. There we go. And now it's fixed. So I've got my confidence interval high and my confidence interval low. And now I can go ahead and put out, or I can go ahead and write out my confidence interval statement. Okay, so here we go. So we can say that Steve is 97.5% confident that the true mean rotational rotational speed of a crocodile death roll is somewhere between all right now we need to know the high and the low well we can say for the high is uh, like 3.8283 and, oh, that was the high. It's generally, we should put the low first. So I'll just cut that out real quick. 3.3717. And then rotations per second. Okay, and there we go. We, we worked our way all the way through this. We determined what type of data we had. We determined if we had a sample standard deviation or population standard deviation. We were able to determine our 
Um, sample size, confidence level, alpha, alpha divided by 2, our degrees of freedom, our standard error, our T value, and then we're able to calculate out our confidence interval, high and low. So that's about it for that. If you've got any questions, feel free to contact me, and good luck.